You're listening to the BBM Global Network with 25 years in broadcast audio and video production. Our passionate team creates content and marketing for the world of Internet talk radio. If you've got a passion, come join us at BBMGlobalNetwork.com. The BBM Global Network. Your voice is now heard. This is The Conscious Caregiver with author and elder care coach, Carol Ann Hamilton. Caring for unculpable aging parents, feeling stressed to the max, then you've come to the right place. Let Carol Ann restore some serenity by giving you concrete and sound solutions for challenging and aging parents. So now, please welcome the host of The Conscious Caregiver, Carol Ann Hamilton. An enthusiastic welcome to each and every one of you. I'm Carol Ann Hamilton, and you are listening to The Conscious Caregiver. We're coming to you live from the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio, where you get grounded and unique solutions that combine the practical and emotional aspects of how to successfully navigate the elder care marathon in a fashion that is unlike the typical content out there. Now, folks, as promised last time, today we're going to get into some concrete tasks and strategies in the form of downsizing, and the theme is kind of legacy or albatross, and I hope that that intriguing question already sparks your interest. My plan is not to steal our valued guest thunder, but I will preview what the curious acronym Uh, does, and it makes distinct reference to the seabird as well as a symbolic meaning of a dead weight or burden one is forced to carry. I say no more. Instead, I'm going to share about my own personal experiences, and I asked myself in preparing for today, what kind of note do I start with? And I'd like to paint a picture for everyone. I am literally taking us back to Monday, July 23rd, 2012, and I'm going to extend us to that Labor Day weekend across a very grueling summer. And here's what happened. So the morning of that Monday, there I was uploading the manuscript for the first of my three elder care books into the author center, as they call it, and that takes a lot of concentration. But in the background of my thoughts, I was thinking, hmm, this is very odd that I have not connected with my father for more than 24 hours because we were at a point where we were speaking multiple times a day and he would actually get confused by phoning at 5.30 a.m. That was morning, thinking it was 5.30 p.m. So you can tell what his state of decline was. Well, I had a neighbor kind of come down the street and take a look at what might have been going on and When he rang the doorbell, etc., there was really no response, which was also very odd. Well, by that afternoon, it did not take me long to decide something has to happen here. And when we've talked in the past about paperwork and getting in place all of your things like the last will and testament, power of attorney, uh, executor status, beneficiary, whatever that may be, I had all of those things, and so I did call emergency services, and I said, I think that we need to breach the front door. I live about 45 minutes away from my parents' former home, so it's not like I could get around the corner in two seconds or less. So I called the authorities, police and fire, and I had them breached the front door. They gave me a lot of trouble, but I proved myself, and uh, and so they did it, only to find my dad lying unconscious in the basement. Oh, my goodness. Well, that will be safe for a different day, what all of that horror was about in terms of 
uh, visiting him for the last five weeks of his life in hospital, etc. But because we're talking about dealing with uh, homes and so on today, I'm just going to highlight some of the things I encountered. For some period of time, I was attempting to get my dad to accept my cleaning support indoors and outdoors to no avail. Uh, so once he was in the hospital, I did approach an outfit that are called extreme cleaners. Yes, that is a profession. And I met with the uh, company's owner a few days later, and we started a very sweltering process. And I mean, literally and figuratively people, because it was a hot summer. My dad had no air conditioning in the house. So imagine that I'm now wading through uh, piles and piles and piles of stuff. To say that it was painful to see the decline, and I knew about it because I visited with him regularly, but I just couldn't prevail. To see that decline was nothing short of heart-wrenching and painful. So every weekend, practically, I spent maybe Saturday, Sunday up there, and then uh, between Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, I would have the extreme cleaning team come in. Uh, it took sometimes four or five or even six fully capable and competent adults to actually deal with the bags and bags and bags of stuff and garbage and donations and accumulation and possessions and everything that I would have worked on solo in that environment. How did I get through? Well, one of the things was I turned on an old boom box that my parents still had and I cranked up my favorite radio station and I figured if I could hear the music, okay, I was still alive and I'm kind of not even kidding you. And then they would come and help me to deal with the next pile until the next weekend, right? And so, uh, you know, I put earlier this morning onto my business Facebook at the uncopable, that is spelled T-H-E-U-N-C-O-P-E-A-B-L-E, -E, the uncopable, some photos that I was ashamed to even show with my closest friends. Oh, mind you, many offered to help me. And on some level, I think that going through the journey of paper by paper, item by item, was something that I needed to do to heal a lot of my past, about which many of you know who are tracking this, this show. But suffice it to say, it wounded me to the core at the time, and it still causes embarrassment to have put up those pictures even now. But I think it's important to be that transparent so that any of you who are dealing with what I would call a hoarders on steroids situation will feel that you are not alone in the world. In fact, you're not. It's a more common situation than you would think. And all of this is, of course, documented since in my two elder care books. There will certainly be other shows on which we deal with all of the emotional aspects, but I wanted to highlight what it took physically to wade through all of that morass. And that's why I have my guest on today. Obviously, as with everybody, I invited her. And that's because I know that she has expertise about how to translate or transform, perhaps, all of those physical objects, not so much from an albatross, and she will define that, but more into the right size, let's call it legacy, that this could actually positively bring into your life. Now, subsequently, over the intervening six years, I can proudly say that I wound up dealing with all of the rest, because just in the fact of cleaning out the parental home that summer, my nightmares didn't kind of end, and I will be speaking about that a little bit later in the show. That was really only the first step, even though that one already practically killed me, if I might say. So she's going to help us, along with my experiences, to transform that into a legacy. Now, we've already reached our first break, so in a few minutes, I greatly look forward to introducing my guest, downsizing specialist and senior move manager, Lori Usipchik. 
And I'm Carol Ann Hamilton. You're listening to The Conscious Caregiver. We're coming to you live from the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. Essential Nutrients, LLC, is the brainchild of entrepreneur Barbara Burns. Inspired by a desire to help others, Barbara worked with a team of scientists to develop unique nutritional liquid supplements with the goal to improve the quality of your life. Glucosamine, zinc, and calcium are essential to well-being, and this is the focus of of Essential Nutrients, LLC. Whether you're a professional athlete, weekend warrior, student, business owner, or homemaker, Essential Nutrients offers products for everyone, including the family pet. And they're easy to take, no pills. Health requires commitment, exercise, a good diet, proper supplementation, and action. So take action today and get your supply of essential liquid nutrients by visiting www.essential-liquids.com. Don't put off your health any longer. Take essential products today and start to measure the difference. Patricia Fayeweather Harlow is passionate about the environment and conserving our natural resources. She's written a five-part book series for all ages called Rock with Rodney and Party with Perky to Preserve Wildlife, which brings awareness through these vibrant characters on preserving and protecting our national parks and historic landmarks. Harlow has launched a campaign to mobilize green supporters, informing a united front against big oil, big coal, and the Keystone XL pipeline. And she addresses the controversial practice of fracking in books four and five. She's determined to bring greater awareness to the dangers of drilling and running crude oil through pipelines that cut through pristine landscapes. And she empowers readers to take action in keeping America beautiful. To learn more about Patricia Fayweather Harlow and to purchase her books, visit www.patricia-fayweather-harlow.com. That's F-A-Y-E-R-W-E-A-T-H-E-R. And play your part in preserving the landscape that we all share and love. Welcome back, all of you. You are listening to The Conscious Caregiver, and we're coming to you live from the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. I'm your host, Carol Ann Hamilton. And before the break, we were just setting the stage for talking about downsizing, whether it's a legacy or an albatross. And please keep in mind that after my guest, Lori, shares her expertise for the next several segments, we are inviting callers to phone in at... 1-866-451-4444. That's 1-866-451-1451. So start to get out a pen or a device of your choice and note those questions. Now, without further ado, it's my big delight. No, make that huge delight to bring you today, Lori Usipchik. And uh, and so Usipchik, perhaps I should say. Sorry, Lori. Anyway, I want to so much acknowledge her for several things because Lori established her firm, Love This House, in 2013, combining her desire to help people with a strong passion for home. Lori does bring a wealth of knowledge to any work she does, and I know this for a fact because she has invested in extensive educational degrees, certifications, and training on dealing with cognitive disabilities. As a downsizing specialist and senior move manager, Lori regularly speaks in public about living more with less and breaking that emotional connection with material goods. She truly tries to help all of her clients get back more value in their lives whether they remain living in their current environment or are moving to a new living environment. And I know that her chapter contribution to my second book on coping with uncopable systems, advocacy for elder care, is truly worth the read, even if it is just for that chapter alone. So, Lori, welcome to the Conscious Caregiver Show. Thank you so much for taking the time to be with us today. Well, I have to thank you, Carol Ann, for not only giving me this incredible opportunity, but to thank you for truly doing the incredible work that you are doing and getting this valuable information out to the world, which is just so important. Um, you just amass so much uh, knowledge, as well as surrounding yourself with all of the experts that you've been having on, and you're really truly helping the listeners. So I, I really do feel honored and privileged to be part of this group 
And also, too, I've you. been given the opportunity to uh, contribute to our, uh, your book. So thank you once again. That is very, very heartfelt. I know it goes two ways. And I want to profile your vast expertise. So let's just jump right in, Lori, and have you start by telling us a little bit something about how you became came to be doing your own work in the world. Yeah, for sure. So the, things that, the thing that always surprises everyone is if you looked at my LinkedIn profile, which is on the Internet, you'd never guess that I would be doing what I'm doing today. I started my education and working career in both science and business, having you know a master's in science degree and an MBA, <clears throat> and I've done historically new product development and research for some very large corporations. So people kind of go, well, what is that? You know, how does that relate to what you're doing today, and how does it uh, you know uh, help you in terms of what you do today? You know, my background has made me a very creative, creative and analytical problem solver. And it makes me also very return on investment focused. So, you know, having the ability to see value and assess value in, in someone's life is, is really, really important. And because I've done also extensive consumer research, I'm trained to listen uh, to people and listen for unmet needs and figure out creative ways to address those needs. So as a, as a, you know, a sideline or a passion, a hobby, I've always had uh, a great passion for the home environment and also for the elderly. And this started when I was pretty young in life, um, seeing my parents uh, deal with basically both of their parents, and they were the primary caregivers for their parents. I saw how they had to deal with one of my grandmothers uh, who had you know, cognitive disabilities later on in life and how they also had to deal with the disposition of, of two homes um, at the end of their lives, you know, doing, dealing rent, with renovating items that hadn't been maintained, preparing the houses for sale, and then having to dispose of the entire houses. So this is what made me get certified as a downsizing specialist, as a senior move manager, also as a renovation project manager, um, so that I could help people with, you know, these, uh, these issues. So I created Love This House about five years ago, um, you know, basically for the following purposes. I wanted to help people fall back in love with their house again. I wanted people to get basically the most financial equity as well as personal equity enjoyment out of their houses. And, you know, ultimately, I wanted to prevent a dumpster from showing up one day in front of a senior's home and an entire legacy being thrown out in one big swoop. And I also ultimately wanted to prevent the problem from being handed down to the next generation in form of, a, you know, what we call a gift, which really becomes a burden. Um, and, you know, especially when that gift is given in guilt. Um, and you spoke about hoarding and a hoarding situation, too. Hoarding is, you know, passed down from generation to generation, and it just gets exasperated over time. So by doing the work that I do, I hope that, you know, we can prevent that from happening, that that issue doesn't keep going down the generations. So I created the albatross analogy to help people um, both laugh and cry at, at situations that they're dealing with, both in their own lives and, and being caregivers for their parents. And really the albatross is, as you put it, it is, you know, the, the bird. But it's also an analogy for a dead weight or burden that we must carry throughout our lives. And that dead weight or burden is in the form of, uh, you know, ideas or what I call clutter syndromes, you know, things that we were told or learned in our lives that we must do with the things that we have in our lives. And um, it comes from uh, an old tale of a sailor or a captain, actually, of a, of a boat killing an albatross on a, on a passage. And the sailors thought that that was a bad omen. So they made their captain wear the dead albatross around his neck for the duration of the uh, trip. So that's how the, the term albatross or burden came into, into uh, life. So I, I, I regularly hold presentations where I show people my albatross, talk about my albatross, which I'll do uh, towards the end of the presentation, and uh, make people see that some of the things that they have in their lives are actually albatrosses. You know, I know a lot of your story, but I didn't even know some of the things that you share with us today that prompt your work in the world. And I know your tagline is something, Lori, like there's heart in everything we do. And, and so I know what heart and soul you bring to this. Now, we're just coming up 
uh, for a brief break. So hang tight, everyone. Already, Lori Yusupchik has uh, shared with us some of what brought her to this work in the world, and we're continuing that after the break. For now, uh, you are listening to The Conscious Caregiver. We're coming to you live from the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. I'm your host, Carol Ann Hamilton. Are you looking for employment and live in Los Angeles, Orange, Riverside, and San Bernardino counties? Jobs Annex is the place for you. Are you an employer looking to fill a position or quite a few positions in Los Angeles, Orange, Riverside, and San Bernardino counties? Jobs Annex is for you. Employers, JobsAnnex.com is your resource for career-minded people. JobsAnnex.com is the convenient place for job seekers and employers to hook up and move forward. Jobs Annex has been serving Los Angeles, Orange, Riverside, and San Bernardino counties for over 14 years. Jobs Annex is a former employment search firm. We've evaluated many thousands of resumes, and we understand what employers want and what job applicants need to be successful in their interviews. At Jobs Annex, we provide you with the tools to tell your story for free. Our resources at jobsannex.com will help each applicant construct an award-winning resume, an eye-catching cover letter, and key interview questions to ask in various types of interviews. Best of all, it's free. jobsannex.com. That's J-O-B-S-A-N-N-E-X.com. Hello, everybody. This is Coach Betty Louise, and I have a question for you. When is the last time you looked in the mirror and saw your amazing beauty and sexuality? 80% of women do not have a positive body image. 97% of women do not like something about their bodies, and over 10 million women have eating disorders. In addition, at least 40% of women are sexually repressed, and one in seven marriages are sexless. I've just completed a book called Healing with Pleasure Medicine. What I will teach you is what gets in the way of your ability to see your beauty, sensuality, and sexuality, how to shift your perception to increase pleasure throughout your entire day. Okay, the place to find all of this information is CoachBettyLive.com. One more time, CoachBettyLive.com. Look forward to connecting. Welcome back to each of you. We're coming to you live from the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. I'm Carol Ann Hamilton, and you are listening to The Conscious Caregiver. Now, just before our break, downsizing specialist and senior move manager Lori Yusupchik and I were really talking about what brought her to be doing this make a difference in the world work that took her from a corporate life into really now downsizing and helping people to gain value in various aspects of their lives, shall we say. So, Lori, I'm really curious to ask you next, in what you do so far, what aspects might you have found especially challenging? Well, to, to be honest, um, there's there's a few that always come to mind. Uh, firstly, people are inherently reactive versus proactive. And I think you've spoken about this on uh, several of your segments. You know, if I had a dollar for every time someone said that I'm not ready to downsize yet or my children will help me when I'm ready or I'm saving everything for my children, I think I would be, you know, extremely rich. Um, I'd always tell people that you have control of your legacy today, but you may not have that control tomorrow, either physically or cognitively. Um, Secondly, people have really a negative perception about uh, life transitions, and we need to have, you know, to shift that to a positive perception and, you know, move away from the past into the present and into the future. You know, life changes are inevitable. Let's pick on each one in our own terms. These are life transitions, not life trade-offs. Um, and whenever I say the word downsizing, people react negatively. So I switched over to right-sizing for the stage of life you're currently in. Um, you know, so just, you know, the message is don't hold on to the past, thinking that it'd be much better than the present or the future. Because, you know, as they say, you can never go home again. Um, thirdly, People, I find, are frozen by emotion, and specifically guilt. Statements like, they told me never to give it away, or it has to stay in the family, or he or she would want me to have it for the rest of my life, causes people to hang on to things they don't really want or need. And, you know, the best day um, that I ever have when I help work with people is making people cry happy tears because I be, I'm able to get them to get past this emotion and allow them to let go of that guilt. Um, 
Fourthly, you know, out of sight, out of mind, uh, people forget what they own, especially if it's in a storage uh, box or facility or in an attic or in a basement. And I always ask them, you know, if it's been stored for six months to a year, do you know what's really in those boxes, what it's worth, and how much money are you spending storing it? So, you know, being out of sight and out of mind is not a great thing for people. And then lastly, you know, people get really overwhelmed by the big picture. When you have to dispose of an entire house, it can be really, really daunting. You know, what do I do with all this stuff? And I always use the analogy of how do you eat an elephant? And the answer is one bite at a time. So I get people to start working on the large items first, you know, typically the furniture and big items. And then we move to the smaller emotional items like jewelry and, you know, ultimately pictures last. But the challenge always is only handle it once. You know, the Ohio principle. I always tell people, Ohio, only handle it once when you're making a decision um, in terms of the downsizing process. Mm -hmm. You know, it's so good, Lori. You're reminding us also that you have switched for reasons that are very, very clear to the idea of right sizing because the whole process is so very laden and you're traveling right into the place I want to go further next with you. And that is kind of attitudes and mindsets or perhaps even strategies that you can recommend to those who are having to deal with that elephant which is what I had to do with my father's home and then subsequently with the home in which I was living until the past couple of years ago. So please just continue to share your wisdom with us right now. Well, and I think the, the main mindset that we have to appreciate is that we as human beings all have the innate desire to leave a legacy behind, to make us feel like we've truly lived, we've made an impact, we've changed a life. We had a life truly worth living, and maybe we, you know, things that we are remembered for. And in wanting to do so, our minds get cluttered by that desire, and we decide that what we own is the legacy that we must keep and pass on to our children. And we tend to overinflate the value of that legacy of all the things that we own. And we think others will value those things in the same way, um, and also that those things will appreciate and value. But, you know, a lot of instances, things don't appreciate in value and people don't necessarily appreciate what you are passing on to them. And uh, to quote Maya Angelou, I've learned that people will forget what you said, people will forget what you did, but people will never forget how you made them feel. A bad memory is anger, guilt, and regret. And I'm just gonna give you a very quick example. I met a man uh, several years ago who literally got two sets of China dishes from his grandmother. He lived in an 800 square foot condo downtown Toronto. And every time he went into his dining room, he whacked his leg on those boxes. You know, his wife didn't want to use them and they were literally in albatrosses sitting there causing him anger and regret. So, you know, knowing that we are not our stuff and our stuff is not us and we don't have to pass it on. If we want to pass something on, do it while you're alive as a living legacy gift. Ask the person if they want it give it to the person so that you know that you can see them using it and enjoying it give it to them without guilt and allow them to have the ability to decide what to do with it when they won't no longer want it or need it so those are some practical mindsets and attitudes we need to pass on mm -hmm. you are so right Lori, about that and uh, so that it stays on the side of legacy i was thinking to myself about the sets of chinaware that I still possess. And you know, because of our conversations that I am due to do a hoopa <laughs> about <Yep>. those <laughs> still, because uh, one set for sure is kind of more an albatross. And, and yet uh, some of the things that people value nowadays are not what was was so with previous generations that grew up like my folks in the Depression and World War II, where every little item had, be squir had to be squirreled away, right? So I love your point about how doing it right now as a living legacy, I hope everybody is getting that, rather than waiting to leave it as a burden that future generations carry is so very important. I wish that like some of the clients I'll speak about afterwards, that my parents had have realized how important it was to deal with this sooner rather than later. I also, before any break that we take, want to remind you that 
Lori Yusupchik is standing by with us, by the way, to receive your calls at 1-866-451-1451. And if you want to take advantage of her helpful and specific wisdom, I would really encourage you to, to reach out. So when we are going to come back, we'll be talking about some some more strategies and also what Lori has perhaps learned about herself in this whole process and some some further words of wisdom that I know she wishes to impart with caregivers. So um, as well as never mind giving you an opportunity to learn more about how you can access her. So already she has shared an array of of uh, great tips and ideas for us. So with that said, we're going to go into our next break. And I'm your host, Carol Ann Hamilton. This is the Conscious Caregiver Show. We're on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. There are artists and then there's Alice Asmar. This award-winning artist has spent her entire life devoted to her artistic pursuits and has had a lifelong fascination with American Indians of the southwestern United States. Her book, Dance to the Great Spirit, showcases her drawings and paintings inspired by sacred rituals of the Pueblo Indians, and four of her lithographs are in permanent collection at the National Museum of American History in the Smithsonian Institution in Washington, D.C. She is one of four artists in the United States to win a Woolley Fellowship for study in Paris at Les Colday Beaux-Arts and has been featured in numerous publications. She's exhibited at the world's most prestigious museums and galleries and recently won a 20-year service award from the Burbank City Council and the inaugural art competition of the Foundation of the United States in Paris. Visit www.asmarart.com, www.aliceasmarinternational.com and email alice at aliceasmar at aol.com. Are you stressed? Is your stress driving you crazy? Do you know there are many ways to relieve the stress? The Spirit Within Massage and Hypnosis Clinic does just that. Reduce your stress plus so much more. Established in 1997, the Spirit Within Massage and Hypnosis Clinic offers an approach to wellness for those individuals who choose to either utilize appropriate complementary methods to enhance their current medical care or to those individuals who are on their personal journey toward improved health and wellness through the use of therapeutic bodywork, Reiki Energy Healing, or Hypnosis. The Spirit Within Massage and Hypnosis Clinic is owned by Dr. Judy Dean, a registered nurse and board-certified massage therapist and medical hypnotherapist in LaPorte, Indiana. Visit www.spiritwithinmassage-hypnosis.com to see all services offered by Dr. Judy. For a free personal consultation, please call Dr. Judy Dean at 219-326-1380. The Spirit Within Massage and Hypnosis Clinic Thanks for staying with us, everyone. I'm your host, Carol Ann Hamilton, and this is the Conscious Caregiver Show. We're on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio speaking today with Lori Yusupchik, Downsizing Specialist and Senior Move Manager. And I just have to let out a resounding, yay! We have a caller today, and her name is Marsha, so I want to bring you right into the fold, Marsha, and you go to it and ask Lori whatever you want about her topic today. Please go ahead. Thank you so much, Carol Ann. First and foremost, I I need to say to you, Carol Ann, that uh, your show is phenomenal. I walk away every week with new tools and techniques to implement, not just with my my moms, but uh, with my family members within the household, so thank you for that. Um, Lori, I'm truly enjoying all your information here, and I've been always been the type of person to downsize as I go. So we're living a very um, hoarding-free type of life. There's there's not a lot around. It's quite simple, and it's very peaceful and calming to us, my husband and I. So that we have uh, on track pretty well. Now, my husband still has his mom, and I have my mom. And I have to give my mom credit because uh, through the moves through the years, she also has downsized and she's done remarkably well with living with the basics of what she needs. However, my uh, mother-in-law is a different story. She's still in her home and it is stogged full. And whenever we have the opportunity, um, we we live quite a distance apart. We're about 3,000 miles away from each other. But when we do go home to visit, uh, I dedicate myself to supporting her in the concept of 
let's start taking care of these things. Let's start downsizing. She does not want to part with anything, and I mean anything. And if I could just show you pictures, you would probably be appalled and amazed at how full the home is. But Carol Ann, after what you said, I'm, I'm thinking they're kind of the same. <laughs> Um, anyway, um, so any advice, Lori, I've gone, I've talked to her, we've packed a few boxes here and there, we started with things that she was ready to let go of, she's 82, she won't always be in her home, um, but what could be the next thing I could do to try to keep the ball rolling, because she's not even open to this, she's not even open to, um, you know, letting things go, and she's got rubber bins filled with everything in the basement that you could possibly think of. So where do I go from here? <laughs> yeah, I mean, what you've been doing, and, and you know, it's, it's, it's interesting that it's, it's your husband's mother that, that, uh, okay. that you have to deal with. And unfortunately, sometimes, you know, the, the spouses are the ones that are dealing with the issue, um, you know, of the opposite person's parent. Um, you know, it's, it's, at least it started the process. And, you know, again, you know, biting off a, 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 eating an elephant is one bite at a time. So you started the process, you, you discussed with her, let's, you know, start dealing with some things. Um, ultimately, as you've heard in other Carol uh, you know, conversations with the, the other experts, it is uh, difficult at times to have those conversations with a person uh, but they need to be had. So the you know the question is, hey mom, um, can you can you think of you know uh, wh why are you saving these things or who are you saving them for? Have you asked uh, the person if they they want these things? You know what you know what uh, you know ultimately do you want to do with those bins? Let's say in the basement. You know uh, can we go through them together? Can we open them up and just look inside and see what is in those bins? I'll tell you what was very cathartic for me to do, um, talking about my own albatrosses. I had 70, 70 um, photo albums in my house from all of the travels and years that my uh, husband and I uh, had been together. And I came to the realization, you know, that I never opened up those albums. They were sitting on a shelf. And if I did look inside those albums, 90% of the photos in those albums, I really didn't need to have. They were of animals, of trees, of places that I could even could identify the buildings of. So what I did is I bought a uh, scanner, I scanned all the negatives, I scanned the pictures that I wanted to keep, and then I literally disposed of 70 photo albums uh, pretty, pretty quickly. But through the process, my husband and I would go through two albums a day and reminisce and think about back to when those things occurred, and then we'd let them go. So you may have to spend some time reminiscing a little bit with her um, as you go through these items and then deciding, okay, mom, what do you want to do with this box now that we have it? And we've gone through it and then we realize, well, maybe there's not stuff in here that we really need. Because again, out of, out of sight, out of mind, people sometimes forget what they have too. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Well, yes, and we had, uh, I've had a couple of um, yard sales with her to start the process as well. and. You know, we went through some things in the basement, and she said, oh, I didn't even know this was here, you know. And I said, well, exactly. We we have things that we aren't even aware, and if you don't have it, you're not missing it. And she was very open to the yard sale, and that went really well because she, she made some money off off the deal, you see. So, so that was a good, good way to get started as well. But, um, yeah, it's going to definitely be a, um, a huge process and... Um, you know, I just appreciate all the information that you are sharing for sure, and I'm taking notes. So, so yeah. I'm and Marcia, if I may also, if I may also add to it, not to interrupt, but uh, if there's a charity she really truly believes in, um, uh -huh. or you know, if she belongs to a church, you know, just yes. let her know there are people in need out there, and you know, some of the things that she has that she's not using anymore really could help the lives of those in need around her. And that may even make her feel good about letting these things go. Uh, a lot of yeah. charities also give tax receipts, so it's actually a, a tax advantage to let things go. Um, so you can tell her about that as well. Right. And she's, she's done a bit of that as well. And, uh, you know, there have been some consignments where you can take some things in and they'll give you a little bit of money for it and so on and so forth. And so, yes, and sometimes that's what we need to do. We need to take it away from ourselves and, you know, make it about, and it is about supporting other people and helping other people in need and so on and so forth. So, um, yeah, for sure. So, 
it's all one bite at a time, as you said. So Correct. thank you for that Correct. reminder too. <laughs> yeah, just don't don't get uh, overwhelmed. Just slow, no, slow, yes. slow process yes. sometimes, but you know eventually uh, the person will turn around, hopefully, and and, and get it. Ladies, yeah. uh, time time for a break. Not to in interrupt you at all. As the host of Carol Ann Hamilton, this is the Conscious Caregiver Show. We're on the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. Big big thanks, Marcia, for calling in. Lori's going to stand by with us for the next segment. Thanks. French Rastafarian baker chef Oug Mat is a fourth generation baker and has worked in eleven countries across three continents. Born in Mulhouse, France, he began apprenticing in his father's bakery at age 12 and has devoted his life to learning cultures of the world from inside kitchens across the globe. He also teaches traditional French baking by hosting demonstrations and classes, and his passion for baking is reflected in his delicious confections. With a deep respect for discipline and his Rastafarian way of life, Chef Ouvmat exemplifies commitment to tradition and culture in a global world. Traveling extensively and combining a myriad of flavors into his recipes, Chef Ugmat brings a unique approach to baking. To read more about the French Rastafarian baker, visit www.frenchchefoug.com. That's H-U-G-U-E-S. Bon appétit and bless up. Do you ever wonder why certain things are happening in your life? How to start a business or a new direction? Need answers? Astrologer Bonnie Perbula can help you reveal your true self and gain strength and focus so you can achieve greater joy and success. Working with a natal birth date, time, and location, Bonnie brings out qualities to aid you in getting the best from your life. She can help you unlock dormant traits to bring you greater awareness. Bonnie also conducts public speaking engagements to educate aspiring astrologers on their journey to the stars. A gifted artist, Bonnie bridges her talents and recently launched a line of Astro Bears, uniquely created in colors of individuals' astrology charts. She also makes one-of-a-kind necklaces of crystal beads and woven thread. To learn more about the world of Bonnie Prabula, go to BonnieGPrabula.com. And for astrology consulting, visit AstrologyConsultants.com or call or email her at 808-526-1536 or BonnieGP at AOL.com. Thanks, everyone, for staying tuned. This is the Conscious Caregiver Show. We're on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. I'm your host, Carol Ann Hamilton, and we've been speaking today with Senior uh, Move Manager and Downsizing Specialist, Lori Yusupchik. And uh, just as we come back in her last official segment, shall we say, she told me she wants to be sure to share her acronym that she calls Albatross. So take that one away, Lori. Yeah, I just want to let people know that, you know, I too uh, have, you know, suffered from accumulation in my life and accumulation is natural. Uh, not dealing with it is, I guess, unhealthy. And um, I want to introduce people to my two albatrosses that I have. Um, the first one is named Hero or Just In Case. And whenever I do a presentation, I bring this bag of buttons. And these are all the extra buttons I've taken off of clothing for the last 40 plus years. And most of the clothes I no longer own, I've given away, donated, etc. But I still have this bag of buttons that I, you know, have in my house just in case I ever need a button uh, to put on a piece of clothing. So that's Hero. The second albatross that I have in my life is called Project or Good Intentions. And I'll give you an example. There's a wonderful magazine that we have that has uh, food and drink pairings. Um, and, you know, I used to accumulate those thinking that one day I would put together a, a recipe booklet and, and make all of those recipes in that magazine. And I started accumulating and accumulating magazines and they started piling up and I realized I could never get around to actually creating that recipe book. So, you know, it was a project that I always had, and it was always in the back of my mind every time I passed that pile of magazines, and, you know, it became a burden, um, so I let that project go. So those are the two albatrosses that I have in my life. Right. Uh, very good, because I have really appreciated, as you know, you sharing from your own experiences, not just also what you have so wonderfully done for your clients, Lori, because I think by our sharing our own albatrosses or warts or whatever you want to call, that's what I call mine, 
I, we make it easier for others to say, oh, okay, well, even if those who, who deal in this realm have some challenges that they're working through too, it makes us more human. And also for people to, to access our, our wisdom and expertise, if that makes sense. And I do still want to ask you about uh, any remaining tips that you have, but it's very important to me to ensure that you had a proper opportunity to profile how can others find out more about you? Where do they go? What do they do, Lori? Well, I'll first I'll start off with how they can find out about me and then give some final tips. So once again, it's Lori Yusuf Chuck. My business is Love This House. You can find me at uh, lovethishouse.ca. You can call me at 416-949-1195 or email me at l-a-u-r-i-e at lovethishouse.ca. I'm present on social media, LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, Google, and I've just started Instagram. I'm not really on Instagram right now, but it's starting it. Um, and you can see the upcoming community presentations that I do, and you can certainly contact me if you want me to do a presentation for your group. Um, I'm more than happy to talk about in greater detail. Um, I have an hour, an hour long presentation associated with uh, the albatross. So those are the ways to contact me. I guess the imparting words of wisdom for everybody out there, number one, you're not alone. Um, you know, see, uh, seniors and especially hoarding towards uh, a person's later years in life is common. Uh, people who have physical and cognitive disabilities will tend to hang on to items because they physically can't take care of them or they need to hold on to them because of, you know, memory loss, etc. cetera. Um, if you're dealing with an issue, it's always going to take longer than you think. But the important part is to be proactive and try to start slowly today, even if it is one box at a time. Um, having a third party objective person help you with this um, would help. It could be a friend, a family member, or certainly someone that you hire to help you through the process like you did, Carol Ann. And you've got to think about the best ways to release the value of all those items that have been accumulated. Sometimes it's donating to a charity. Sometimes it's giving it to a friend. Sometimes it's putting a free sign on the item at the end of a driveway and letting it go out into the community, into the world, and knowing that you've made someone else's life better by having that item released. So those are kind of some closing points that I wanted to make today. I think those are really important also, Lori, and we still have a few minutes. One thing that I really appreciated from you was that you made me aware of a wonderful women's shelter that's not that far away from where we each live. And boy, what a boon that was when I was clearing out my own uh, home after 22 years of living there. What a... Oh, what an uplifting, heart-opening experience that was, that they were able to immediately take some larger pieces of furniture that were equipping a woman uh, who was going to be moving back into the community with her children, and that she could be basically set up with items that I knew I could no longer keep, but that really equipped her so wonderfully. And I know you are a wealth of information in that regard, too. So I would add to everything that you do for people, because you are one of those objective and neutral resources, that you also bring awareness to the various places that we can take things, right? Do you want to add anything else by way of those last remarks, Lori? Yeah, I mean, my business is entirely tied to charities, charitable organizations, because, again, I firmly believe in giving back to the community. So whenever I can... Uh, keep something out of landfill, uh, being an environmentalist, I guess, as well, um, I'm going to find a way to do so, um, so that someone else can get value um, from an item as opposed to, you know, it going into a dumpster and going into landfill. So it's, it's always my pleasure to highlight charitable organizations in, in that way and to help people in any way that I possibly can. And you do work for Habitat for Humanity, if I'm not mistaken? Yeah, I have been volunteering with Habitat for quite a number of years now and, you know, attend their events and fundraisers and, and do that type of thing. They do incredible work within uh, our society and around the world. And I highlight these things because 
we're back to there's heart in everything we do, love in everything we do. And so I want people to know that you do this as much necessarily as it being a business for you, as also you are somebody who's striving to make a difference in the world. And that's why I had you on. Lori, just remind us again where people can access you. Yep, for sure. Lovethishouse.ca, Lori at lovethishouse.ca, and phone number 416-949-1195. Thanks very much, Carol Ann. Lori, beautiful to have you on. And folks, we're going to go into our last break. So this is the Conscious Caregiver Show. We're on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. I'm your host, Carol Ann Hamilton. Intergenerational programming is uniting America due to the tireless efforts of Dr. Ramona Frischman. Retired from the Miami-Dade County Public School System, Dr. Frischman continues to develop intergenerational learning programs aimed to improve the lives of children, young adults, and seniors through unique strategies and public policy in order to establish a mutually supportive agenda. She views intergenerational programs as a resource for policymakers and the general public on economic, social, and personal initiatives that govern our society. Her work bridges the generational gap, providing many individuals the opportunity to explore areas of common ground and celebrate each other's diversity. Contact Ramona Frischman at RamonaLong at AOL.com or visit www.gu.org to learn more about intergenerational programming. Hello, I'm Steve Fagan, and I'm president and CEO of Fagan Associates, but I'm also a life coach. I'm here to help you reach your dreams, goals, and objectives. As a life coach, it's my job to be your support, to be your teammate, to help you understand what is your dream, what is your life passion, and then together we work as that team to help you reach your specific goals. Life is worth living the best you can be. Working with a life coach, you're fulfilling those dreams and goals is your passion, and it's your way of living. Let me help you do that today. Let me help you really reach the best that you can be as a person and live the life you should be living. I'm Steve Fagan. I'm a life coach, and I'm here for you. Contact Steve Fagan at FaganAndAssociatesInc.com or call 1-800-239-2701. And I'll be glad to help you move forward to live the life of success. Reach your dreams, your goals, your objectives. We can do it together. Welcome back, everyone, to our last few minutes together for today. Can you believe it? And we're on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. I'm your host, Carol Ann Hamilton, and this is the Conscious Caregiver Show. Today, we have been speaking with downsizing specialist and senior move manager, Lori Yusupchuk. And wasn't she a wonderful guest? Boy, what a wealth of information. And in fact, next time around, we're going to... Uh, build on themes that we have been talking today, but a little bit with a, an additional perspective, and it, it will regard downsizing your life, why less is more. But I know that that guest is really going to talk about her own journey, uh, living a life filled with possessions to, as she says, a life full of meaning. So it really echoes what Lori said, but next time around, we're going to echo also the the emotional aspects, because I can tell you, although having emphasized the grueling nature of uh, dealing with my father's hoarders on steroids home, that was a very physical and practical process. There are also hidden gems that people don't realize in that process. Lori was talking at the start about leaving things like photos, jewelry, sentimental items. I add to that greeting cards till the last. And there is a reason that we start with the big stuff that I have found, too, without possessing her certifications. And that is that the, those last items are the most emotional, most sentimental, most difficult to make decisions of, of all. Yet, I can squarely share that with everyone that the last dialogues I had with my dad, like the laundry room chats, as I call them, were amongst the most important of all, because in that case, my father was actually leaving his legacy. Any of you, by the way, who are energy sensitive may want to have a Kleenex box nearby, just saying. But for today, I echo the theme that, yes, it is eating an elephant one bite at a time. And I implore 
those of you in the audience, there are many of you who are really in that sandwich generation between aging parents and having your own children or even grandchildren now. And please let us all make it easier on the next generation, like clients that I know have been dealing with their own possessions so that they don't leave that albatross for others. And we'll talk about those myths as well. A reminder, folks, that you can also find me on the Bold Brave Media archives, and you would go to boldbravemedia.com slash shows slash the Conscious Caregiver. Mind you, I'm always available for a free readiness session to see how my practical plus emotional expertise can help in your challenging situation, whether that is with aging parents or relatives, perhaps significant others, friends, neighbors, or colleagues. Either way, I am so privileged that you can continue to stay with us and track this show. We had a lovely call in today, which was very much appreciated. So I want to thank again our guest, as well as her for supporting the Conscious Caregiver. Uh, as well, my own website is copingwithuncopableparents.com. So we're committed here as you know, to giving you practical and emotional support to get through what can be an extremely grueling chapter of life. So those were some of the summary statements that I wanted to make today. I'm just looking over if there was anything else I wanted to say. Uh, proactivity to build with what Lori was saying uh, is important. And by the way, even if your folks are installed in an assisted living facility, do not think your woes are done. In fact, that belief system is one of the top five caregiving myths that I encounter in my work in the world. And so I can only tell you that when I still had the parental home to sell, that took another eight months to do before the final clean out. So on that note, we're going to say goodbye, wish you a great week. And we're on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. I'm your host, Carol Ann Hamilton. This is The Conscious Caregiver Show. You've been listening to The Conscious Caregiver with host Carol Ann Hamilton. For a fresh and unique approach to modern caregiving, listen to gain a weekly dose of inspiration and down-to-earth advice. Right here on The Conscious Caregiver with Carol Ann Hamilton. been listening to the bbm global network the ideas views and opinions of this broadcast are those of the participants of the program and are not necessarily the ideas views and opinions of the bbm global network company